What up everybody, my name's Tim, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the Marin DSX-2. All right, so before we get started, if you're into bikes, bags, and cameras, and kind of how all of that stuff comes together, that's what this channel's about. If you're new here, welcome. And uh, let's just jump right into it. Again, this is the Marin DSX2, and they are calling it a flat bar gravel bike. <laughs> what did you say? You heard me. I've had it for about three months now. Big shout out to Marin, thank you so much. And I've taken it on several different road types. I've taken it on the road, I've commuted with it, I've put my little daughter's bike seat on it, I've taken it on some single track, some really, really questionable terrain, lots of dirt, lots of gravel, lots of descending, lots of climbing. And in this video, I hope you guys get a sense of what this bike is all about. This bike is, I think $1,150, so sub 1200 bucks. And so what are you getting with that? I think you're getting a lot of bike for that, actually. So to start with, you're getting a Series 3 aluminum frame, which is nice and light and definitely stiff. I think all in with pedals, this thing weighs 25 and a half pounds. Carbon tapered fork. What do you think of this paint job? It's kind of like a love hate. A lot of people like it, a lot of people don't like it. I think, I think I like it actually. It's got that whole modern retro look and definitely these pin stripings kind of throughout the bike look really cool in my opinion. We get the frame, we get the seat, we get the Marin branded seat post, Marin branded handlebars. As for your drivetrain, you're getting a Shimano Dior 12-speed drivetrain, which is awesome. And a big upgrade from the previous DSX or the previous gen DSX is that you're getting now hydraulic disc brakes. So it's got a 12-speed cassette here. I think it's a 40-tooth or 42-tooth up in front. I'll have those numbers up on the video here. And that means there is a bunch of gearing. I think that gear range is like 500% or something like that. What's cool is you get this 1x12 drivetrain, which isn't necessarily new in the mountain bike world, but it's definitely appreciated in the gravel bike. You get two places up here for bottle cages if you need it. Internal routing for a dropper post if that's something you want to rig up, which is so sick. I wish I had that when I was ripping around. You get a clutch derailleur, which is awesome. You get the flat bar, of course, and there's all these little, like, little Marin touches all throughout the bike, which are really, really appreciated. You also get plenty of rack points for fender. So you have one on the fork there, and then one on the seat tube back here for that. That's good for like a, you know, a fender. Two little holes in the back for a, you know, a rack or, of some sort. That pretty much lends itself to like a light bike packing steed here, which is awesome. <laughs> which I don't, I don't, I mean Through axles on the front and the rear, which is pretty much standard across today's bikes. Sweet, sweet uh, Marin head badge for 2021. I love the look of that. And I think that is pretty much it as far as specs go. So this video is gonna have a bunch of different riding scenarios and uh, let's just kind of check some of that stuff out. All right, it is wet out and we're gonna get into some dirt. I imagine it's gonna be All right, we're dressed for rain because it's raining. We're gonna go to the 680 trail here in the Bay Area, do some gravel riding with the DSX2. Let's go. Here it is. We're out here in the rain. This is amazing. Slippery, mud. One thing I can say right off the bat is I appreciate all the gears that I have right now. Kinda as I'm riding right now, and what I'm feeling is plenty of gears. I guess we're gonna go downhill now a little bit. Hope it don't slip. Oh, it's definitely slipping. <laughs> That's not the bike's fault though. One thing to note is if you're gonna be going off-road, off-road and some wet, like really muddy terrain, you may want to uh, swap these tires out for something that's a little more appropriate for mud. And good news is these can take a big tire. So we've got plenty of room, plenty of gearing. Stopping power, we'll have to see. 
once we truly start descending how it is and the rain. One thing I wanted to bring to light was the shifting here. Maybe it's just a Shimano thing, but they've got this little trigger to engage the uh, shift mech just by pulling like your trigger like that. So maybe that's just a Shimano thing, but yeah, climbing's nice. I got all the gearing I need, 12 gears. Ergonomics are nice. You kind of do this with the handlebars, get different hand positions because they're kind of swept a little bit. No problem climbing with these gears. That's the thing that I want to stress right now is the range that you have. A one by 12, that's awesome. Now for mountain bikers, it's nothing new. For gravel bikers, that's one extra gear. So on those rides where you're really trying to get up something or if you're bike packing, that's like a godsend. Muddy bike. performance of these hydro discs. Tons of stopping power. Lots of trust. Confidence inspiring, all that stuff. Width of the handlebars felt perfect actually. But at first it'd be a little narrow feeling because they are a little narrow and they have a little bit of a sweep. But that felt nice. We've done our best. I gotta give it to you guys. It is windy and rainy and just slopping wet and muddy. So, that said, we're gonna get out of here. Spike feels great downhill. The bars feel great. The brakes have plenty of stopping power, which is a nice change up from previous gen DSX. Because they're hydro, wet, sloppy conditions like this, that makes the world of a difference. It's true. This is a mountain biker's gravel bike, 100%. Yes, dude. Yes. The aftermath, not that bad. It's a lot cleaner than it was. And so filthy though. Yeah, awesome. We start today's adventure on the road here. Get a good sense of how this bike does on the road all around her. We're not far into it, but this thing feels amazing on the road. You can get down. Plenty of gears. Digging the ergonomics of this handlebar though, for real. You got wide, and you got this little sweep right here. You can rest your palms. I really like this shifter, this trigger shifter. Just hit it with my pinky. Boom. Go. Go 
filming you. Oh, I'm just gonna push you over into this car. <laughs> Gorgeous. This gear range is awesome. Really all around. I'm not trying to like road race right now, but for this chilled out ride, perfect. Climbing though, feels great. Benefit of a rigid fork, huh? Climbing speeds, I dig it. Let's see. If I spin out at all, Oh no, not at all. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> right, let's see if we can catch up here. We got two e-bikes and a road warrior. Here we go. All right, now we're on some dirt. Yay! Get our mask on here. Take a moment to check it all out, right? Guess we'll keep it moving. I'll give you some more riding thoughts as they come up. If you look at it from a road riding point of view, it's uh, you know a bit slower, bigger, completely different geometry. But if you look at it from a mountain biking perspective, then it's lighter stiffer, faster, and if you just have one bike and you want to hit road and dirt, gravel bikes are it. And if you're coming from a mountain bike and you're used to flat bars, then this flat bar gravel bike might make a lot of sense. If you're coming from road, wanting to get on some dirt, then, you know, traditional drop bar gravel bike might be more your pace. If you look at the way Marin sells this bike as a mountain biker's gravel bike, makes sense, right? It's got a lot of mountain bike DNA in it. Flat bars, slacked angles, relaxed, but gravel bikey in a sense that lots of mounting points, a rigid fork, a carbon fork, you can take bigger wheels, a 700C, the list goes on. So, I'm all for it. Flat bar gravel bike, mountain biker's gravel bike, whatever. Call it whatever you want to call it. Let's get out and ride. Cool. Gosh, there's a woman painting right there. Go her. Oh, come on. Now we get to go down some crazy downhill. Marincello. See how this bike does.
Oh man, are you kidding? Dude, okay, that okay, was okay, nuts. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sitting here and I'm editing this video right now and I feel like this is a great place to kind of wrap it up and let you know what my final thoughts are of the DSX2. The way that I look at this bike as a flat bar gravel bike um, and the way that it's marketed is that it is truly a mountain biker's gravel bike. And that's not like marketing jargon that, you know, is trying to be too much. It makes a lot of sense because it's got a flat bar, so if you're if you're coming from a mountain bike, you're used to a flat bar. It's got a lot of mountain bike DNA in that it's got a shorter chainstay, longer wheelbase, but also a shorter chainstay, so you can kind of flick the bike around, and, and, and the playability of that comes through big time. If you're going into a berm or a corner, you can really just like dig into it, and it makes it, and it's really playful. So if you're a road cyclist looking to get a gravel bike, I think you're gonna feel more at home if you get something with drop bars in it, obviously because you're on a road bike, drop bars, you got you get a gravel bike, you want drop bars. I think that transition is nice. Um, again, mountain biker, flat bars, flat bar gravel bike, that makes more sense. And again, the argument can be made that these are just, you know, rigid fork mountain bikes, or they're just like old school mountain bikes for that. Or they're just a hybrid bike. Although hybrid bikes, I never really got into hybrid bikes, but from what I've seen of them, they're usually two by setup, they're a little bit more upright they're kind of made for just commuting around town whereas the term gravel bike kind of has this association to just getting off road i like that i like that a lot um, you do have aero gravel bikes and you can get in the like the more race side of things and i like that too again it's just options right now and it's really cool to kind of see where the industry is you know putting their focus on things and in the end it just works out for us the consumer because we do have lots of options um, that also can be a bad thing because there are so many bikes. It's somewhat overwhelming, especially if you're somebody looking to get into gravel riding or if you're just looking to buy your, a new bike. There, there's so many. So what I hope this video did help with is kind of break down that this is a great all-around bike. It's a ton of fun to ride. It's really easy to wheelie also, just to note that. And yeah, I've absolutely had a blast riding this bike. It has become the one bike that I would take most often when I was going on gravel rides with my friends and they opted to take their um, mountain bikes. And I will say that the terrain that we were on, I didn't necessarily feel like I needed a gravel or a mountain bike because a mountain bike is heavy and I don't like climbing with it. And a lot of the rides and trails around here that we were going on have a lot of climbing. With that being said, you know, this bike absolutely rips. I've had an absolute blast with it, and I know you will as well. If I missed anything, just hit me up in the comments below with a question or something that you wanna call out. Thanks a lot for tuning into this video. I know it's a long one, but I appreciate you guys sticking it out with me. If you're into bikes, bags, and cameras, please consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Tim All Day. And uh, I hope you're doing okay out there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.